Assalamu alaikum. This is Ask the Counselor with Sister Nelly Eva. I've got questions, questions, questions that you all have sent in today. I'm so excited to be able to see what you have here, what you've sent to me, and to be able to answer them. I haven't seen you guys since uh, Ramadan. So I am so excited to see you. Please tag a friend. Tag a friend. Let someone know that we are live. The questions that I get range from pretty much anything. But the thing that I specialize in is relationships. So a couple of things for those of you that are new here. If you have a question that you want to ask, please, you can do so in the comments or you can send a message privately and I'll be able to get it and I'll try my best to answer in real time. Also, no, I am a therapist. I am not an Islamic scholar. So my first source of information is always, inshallah, Quran and Summa. Do know that if it is a question of Islamic scholarship, I am limited on what I can tell you. Next, I want to know who it is that I'm talking to, where it is that you are, and how you're doing today. All right, so let's start about with the gratitude list. What are you grateful for today? Let's say I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start. You know what I'm grateful for? One, I'm grateful to be here. Two, I am grateful that today it is possible that I'm going to be able to go outside. Yes, I go days without going outside, y'all, because I work from home. And it's back to back to back to back. And so sometimes I go a couple of days without going outside. So I'm looking forward to being able to go outside today. And I am definitely looking forward to being here with you. So this is our first question. And I can tell that the ones I that I've gotten... Today, I'm going to tell you they really are um, centered more around relationships, around marriage, around engagements. That is something that I specialize in. So, but they're always challenging. So even though I have this specialty, I sometimes, you know, I, I had to pull out my books <laughs> and to, to figure out, well, hmm, what is this one? Okay, so this one, um, particular one is a couple that wants to get married in the future and they're in school they haven't talked in a while but her I, okay it's a her okay her parents they want him gone there her parents are totally against his proposal and it is because in his family that there is a history of divorce and she hasn't met his, some of his family either's I, I, uh, as well. Um, and she says, you know, I don't, I, this feels like a really helpless situation. And she doesn't feel like they'll ever accept him. And so she says, you know, should I wait and see what he's going to do? Or should I try to fight? Should I try to fight for what it is that we could possibly build? Okay, so I see some folks have come in and spoken um, <laughs> and spoken. I'm going to respond to you in just a second. I'm so glad that you're here. Now I'm going to go back to the question. Should you wait for him to come up to see what he's going to do and fight? Well, I'm going to answer this and uh, address a couple of things. You know, your parents being against it, I'm not going to negate that while you are adults and it is truly your decision about what it is that you you uh, do i'm not going to negate the role and the, the opinions of your parents i also know that depending upon your culture that it may be culturally expected for you to give them even greater consideration i don't know i don't have that information however i do know that it can exist and i don't want to be insensitive to something that is that very well may be there so let's just put that out there okay that could be problematic and two i want you to think about even if you decide to see if this young man follows through are you willing and up for that fight are you willing to fight for your parents to potentially change their 
perception of him? And are you willing to accept the internal fight of what you may feel in the event that they don't change his, their minds? Because that is also a possibility. And so this is so much about how much do you have within you internally and how much you're willing to potentially devote to this situation that the two of you may be creating. Um, one, you could be creating a beautiful love story and the start of a wonderful family, but you also may be creating rips. And so that's for the two of you to decide about how much do you want to put into it? And that's the part I can't answer. But I want you to think about that question. Think about what your answer is to that. I will even tell you, you know, for me, prior to getting married, I remember there was one particular suitor. And he was very kind to me. However, I knew that my family, uh, they always have questions, right? So I, the question part didn't bother me. However, I knew that I would probably have to explain a lot of his culture and the, cult, the cultural climate of his family. I wasn't up for it. I, I really, I, I did not want to extend myself to that degree. There were so many other variables to consider in regard to location. At that time, I was a student. Um, at that time, I also would be bringing children to the union. There were so many other priorities for me that that one was not one that I wanted to literally choose for myself. And I'm going to give you that, that type of example. And I wasn't invested. I can't say I was, I liked him, but no, I didn't have that type of emotional attachment yet. Um, and so I tapped out. So this is for you to consider. What are you, what are you, how much are you willing to put into this? All right, so I'm going to go to another one. Some of these have a lot of explanation behind them. So I'm going to go to the ones that are a bit more brief. That um, <clears throat> We'll start with those first. So there's this couple. They said they've been married for 16 years and they can't stand each other. Imagine that. That's sad, isn't it? But these are real stories and this happens all the time. And because being with someone for a very long time doesn't mean that the relationship is is loving and it's healthy. And I'll give you another example. You know, a parent-child relationship. Your parent is one of the very first people that you meet. However, they people don't always get along with their parents. So having known someone for a long time does not mean that you've created this type of bond that both of you benefit from. All right, so they don't like each other. So there's no talking. They don't have fun. Just hatred. I don't, that's a very hard word, isn't it? Hatred. But they have four beautiful children together and they feel badly about the children and what they witnessed witness within their marriage and what should you do hmm what do you do when you are literally miserable in a marriage you know there are two things that Allah says one that we don't cause oppression and we don't um, accept oppression he doesn't want us to be oppressed and he doesn't want us to oppress anyone else and so if this marriage is giving the two of you oppression please consider whether or not let me fix my screen. Whether or not the two of you would be better suited to be apart. Sometimes you are. Sometimes people are better apart than they are together. And we have this idea that, oh, you know, divorce is an awful thing. And it is. However, what people do to each other within a union can be so much worse than a divorce. And two, I want you to think about, and it sounds like you already have, what are the two of you teaching your children about love, about marriage, and about commitment? Do you really want to show them that marriage is something that is not desirable and that is something that is not healthy and nurturing? I don't, I don't believe so. It doesn't sound like you do. But it might also be the example that they're getting from the two of you. 
So think about that because they are learning. They're learning from watching the two of you be married. This is actually their first lesson in how a man and a woman are supposed to love each other and how they, they, they care about each other and express it. And think about the lessons that they're getting and those are those really the ones that you want to teach? Hmm. That's something to think about. So back to the question of what should you do? I don't tell people what to do, but I do give people questions and things that will possibly direct them on their journey to the correct answer. Would the two of you be willing to consider actually taking the steps to divorce to be better people to each other? Y'all are family for the rest of your lives. You have children together. But being family doesn't mean that the two of you also have to be husband and wife. And you may be more respectful in the, in, in the concept of being co-parents to your beautiful children. So please consider that. Notice my words. I said, are you willing to act out the steps of divorce? Many times people know that they should get a divorce and they don't. And they don't do that because the steps of divorce, they are painstaking. There are times when there's fear and there's a lot of uncertainty. You know, even though the two of you don't seem to like each other very much, there actually may be some comfort in the patterns and the traditions and the routine that you've created for 16 years. And sometimes, you know, familiarity feels more comfortable and the uncertainty of the possibility of what's out there and you don't know what it is, it can be really scary. But if you can get past that part, are you willing to follow through? So I've got Ahmed. Ahmed is here. Walaikum salam, Ahmed. Uh, we have the shake here. He said, you say you've been on your bike. I know being outdoors is beautiful, isn't it? My son went bike riding yesterday. And you're from the UK. I have clients in the UK. I haven't been able to visit there yet, but I do have clients there and they speak wonderfully, wonderfully of the the cities that they live in and the climate and the culture and the people there. So thank you. Thank you for being here. All right, so we're gonna go to the other, other ones. So this person has been married for 11 months and they were engaged before and they describe it as an arranged marriage. I know that that can mean many things, but I'm just going to give it to you just like I get it. And this person also is saying that their father was abusive growing up physically and emotionally. And the reason why they were motivated to get married was to get away from the abuse within the family unit. But she says, I don't always get along with my husband either, you know, because of some of the habits that he has. And I'm, I'm not going to get into the habits, but, you know, yeah, there, there are things that a lot of people really wouldn't like. Let's just put it like that. And there isn't any romance. And this is making her a man love. Y'all, that was Mackenzie, my cat. Mackenzie says hello. You want to say, you want to say hi? Mackenzie, you want to say hello? Y'all have probably seen Mackenzie here before. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> there's a lot, a lot of sexual intimacy. And she's saying, I want to be married, but I feel like I am suffering. I'm suffering because of what this is doing to me internally. And she's just asking for help. You know, um, there are a lot of things here to unpack. And while I do see how the marriage can exacerbate and make you feel worse about your experiences in your childhood and how you feel about the marriage, I'm going to challenge you to do something. You know, very often we can be in bad relationships and we look at these relationships and we blame the relationships. And guess what? 
sometimes that blame is valid and it's real. However, it's not the core. I want you to go back to the origin of some things that you talked about. Go back to your childhood and look at the things that you experienced. And sometimes when we have been in abusive situations, it's easy for us to transition into another abusive situation later on. Kind of like what I said with the couple that's been married for six years. It's familiar. And yeah, sometimes we confuse familiar abuse with love and care because that's how other people have shown us love and care. And while you do have marital issues to respond to, as well as being a victim of sexual abuse, because that part is here too, please, please strongly consider healing from the things that began before your marriage. It could be very easy for me to say, yes, you need to get out of this situation. However, you can't get out of you. Can't run from you. You cannot divorce yourself. And I'm hearing some unresolved issues and some old hurts. And in every relationship you have, you're bringing them with you. Why? Because you can't run from yourself. So I challenge you to address those things first and see if that will help you to be able to get a lot more clarity about this marriage, how you got here, the decisions that made you decide to choose this type of person. You said you were engaged for a year. Probably, very well likely that you saw some signs even before marriage. And if you don't, you could get out of this marriage and you will attract similar scenarios repeatedly until you do something here first. And may Allah grant good because you mentioned a lot of things that I'm sure that are painful. But if you want to have healing in one place, look for it within yourself first. Inshallah. All right, so this is the last one. And please remember, for those of you who have come later, if you have a question, you can please comment. I want to hear your feedback. I want to hear your thoughts, even about what I'm saying. You may have something to add where you think what I said makes perfect sense, or you may even have a, a, a viewpoint, you know, that I haven't considered. I want to hear it. And if you have a question, um, or a comment that you want to keep privately, please put it in the message box. I'll get to it. Okay, so this person is letting me know from the jump. I want you to include Ka'an and Sunna. Yes, I will do what I can do. So this person is saying they've been engaged to a lovely Muslima. <clears throat> and they're from two different countries. Um, and they were introduced to each other and their families clicked, they clicked, and they've been engaged now. However, because of COVID, they haven't been able to get married. Um, and they're in their two different countries at, at this time. And so he's, he's saying, you know, I had gotten the impression that, you know, she was rooted in spirituality and, you know, I feel like I have, and you know, I've never had any non-Islamic relationships and done, you know, things that are haram. However, I found out from the social media that she has in the past. However, I'm going to note that what you're saying that she's done previously, while it may have been haram, it was a couple of years ago. Okay, it was about three, four years ago. And um, I want to put that in, in context because that does matter. And you're saying that you asked her about it. 
she gave you some answers and she gave you some more revelation and people you want to know if she's repented from it and she's saying yes i sure have but you're also wondering that is it permissible for me to break off this engagement if i believe that she's had a bad past or will allah hold me accountable for breaking this promise that i've kept you know, I think that it is beautiful that you are trying to make sure that you respond and you react with integrity. And I'm going to say this, is that to be mindful that marriages are sometimes dissolved. We call that divorce or even an annulment. And engagements can be dissolved too. Everyone who gets engaged should not follow through with marriage. You know, and the beautiful part about courtship is that it allows you to be able to court someone, to get to know someone and to find out, is this someone that you should marry? You know, people believe that courtship means we're going to get married, that we are engaged and intended. I want you to think a little deeper and, and be mindful that this process is also for you to decide if you should follow through. Just because you're engaged, it doesn't mean that, hmm, this, this is the person for me. And you don't want to find out that it's not in a marriage. It would be easier to end an engagement than it would be to end the marriage. Now, <clears throat> you said, will Allah hold me accountable for breaking all a promise? If you believe that, now, because I'm not going to tell you what to do with your integrity and what you feel like is, is you keeping your word. You know, in the event that a Muslim has to break a promise and they cannot keep their word, I want you to please look in um, to ask a scholar or someone that you trust, perhaps your imam, about what you can do to make amends for not keeping your word there are some things there are some steps and i don't want to tell you what they are because i am not a scholar but they are there and so if you could if you could be curious about that if you feel like if i don't do something i'm held accountable because it's very important for you to feel um for you to feel comfortable about your decision with within within yourself all right you also ask should I bring this up with her parents or her elder sister? I don't know. I don't even know because she is an adult. And also considering whether or not she was an adult when it happened. And also being mindful that we are to conceal the sins of the Muslim. Do they need to know? Are you saying if I present it to them? If you present it to them, what's the goal? What good is that going to do? And if you present it to them, what is it going to do with her relationship with them? Is that going to improve their relationship, her relationship with them? It may even make it worse. And that's something that you want to, to think about as well. Do you want to have a hand in that? What is the goal for, for telling them? And if it doesn't have a good intent, why do it? And you're asking, do, is it permissible to break off an engagement if you feel like a person has had a bad past? Now, I want us to be mindful that everyone has these things in their past. Everybody, including you. I don't know what yours are. And even if you have not done something similar to the things that she engaged in, we have all done something that was displeasing and that was sinful. You may have done something if she knew about, for her, she may have some of the same upset. No, those are things for Allah to judge. This is going to be about, if you follow through with this marriage and you know this information, are you going to mistreat her? Are you still going to be respectful and give her your right, her rights as your wife? And if you know or you believe you to be a person where you won't leave her be, don't bring her into a marriage where you know that you would be putting her at risk of that. That's not fair. That's not fair to you and it's not fair to her. Y'all are just going to make each other miserable. No one needs that. So again, 
I'm going to tell y'all, I don't tell people what to do, but I will definitely give you some things to consider so you can get to the best decision for yourself. Okay, those are the questions that I have for today. Walaikum salam, Tamika. Happy to have you here with us. And perhaps you can go back and you can hear everything from start to finish. I'm going to check and see if we have had any questions to, to come in while I have been up here talking with you. doesn't look like we have. And so what I want, I want to reiterate a theme that I did here today. While each one of those scenarios was totally, totally different, when you are considering, what should I do? You can make a decision. You can make it Sakara, and Allah can put it in front of you and make it totally clear. But one of the things I encourage people to also pray and ask Allah for, for is courage. Sometimes we know exactly what it is that we need to do, but we also know the consequences, the outcomes, the struggle, the feelings and the emotions, even the judgment. People may even judge you for what it is that you decide to do because they don't agree with it. And because of those things, we're not willing to follow through. So pray and ask a lot for courage. And sometimes doing the right thing is doing the hard thing. But it's about which hard you're willing to do. So until next time, I'm going to see y'all later. Y'all please set your notifications to About Islam so you'll be able to get them when someone is going live. Go to the page, share this information. May Allah grant good. And for the bike rider, keep riding that bike, getting sunlight. You know, there's so much, there's so much beauty. Be sunlight is always beautiful, right? But also it just feels good. It lightens your mood. So y'all get outside. Be grateful for today. And I'll see you next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.